In chapter 4, section 7, we're going to do a couple of standards. Standard 4, where we need to remember factoring polynomials, uh, including the difference of perfect squares, perfect square trinomials, and the sum and difference of two perfect cubes. We're going to get part of that. And part of standard number 8, where we solve quadratic equations by factoring. There's a lot more that I've put in the blue. We will be picking that up at a later lesson. So first of all, to solve polynomials, we're looking for something called roots, solutions, or zeros. They all mean the same thing. We're looking for the answers. First step is to write the equation with everything on one side of the equal sign and zero on the other side. Second step is to take the polynomial that's by itself on one side of the equal sign and put it into its prime factorization. And that's utilizing all that we've just learned about factoring polynomials. Third step is to use the zero product property, which we're going to show you below, and to set each factor equal to zero. And then the last step here is to solve each equation that we end up with. So the zero product property, sometimes we call it ZPP, put a little zip into your life, starts out saying that A and B are real numbers. And this should be fairly obvious. If you multiply two numbers and get zero, either the first number was zero or the second number was zero, or perhaps both numbers are zero because zero times zero equals zero. So we're going to use that information to solve this equation. This particular equation, we're starting out very simply because we already have everything in step one done. Everything is on one side of the equation, zeros on the other. We already have step two done. Factor the polynomial into its prime factorization, which again means factored as far as it can possibly factor. So now we're just ready to practice step three, the zero product property, which says take each factor and set it equal to zero. And then we're just going to take step four here, which is to solve each equation. So on the left, we're going to add four to both sides. Then we're going to divide both sides by three. On the right, we're going to subtract three from both sides, divide both sides by two. And it's an or statement. So x is either equal to 4 thirds, which yes, you can call that 1 and a third, or x is equal to negative 3 halves, which you can call that negative 1 and a half. All right, so we've practiced the zero product property portion of it. Let's move on to our next example, which is going to ask us to go through the whole process. So step one says get everything on one side, zero on the other side. We can accomplish that by adding 4 to both sides. Step two says factor the left side completely. And if you recall that in the factoring process, Roman numeral one was to look for a greatest common factor. There was a greatest common factor and it is two. In this particular case, I know you probably don't like this idea, but yes, we can divide both sides of the equation by any number. So dividing by two works. We can't divide by zero. But dividing by 2 works, and that cancels out the 2's on the left. And 0 divided by 2, 0 divided by anything, is still 0. The advantage of that is now we've got less trial and error to do as we factor 3y squared plus 7y plus 2 using our trial and error methods that we learned in the factoring process. To make a longer story short, we know that the signs are both going to be plus. To get y squared, it's going to be y times y. The factors of 3 that are going to work is 3 times 1. There are no other choices. And the factors of 2 are only 1 and 2, or 2 and 1. But in this order, they work. We check the outside, we get positive 6y. Check the inside, we get plus 1y. And that gives us the plus 7y we're looking for. So now we're ready for the zero product property portion. We're going to set each factor equal to 0 and solve each equation. So on the left, we're going to subtract 1, then divide by 3. On the right, we're going to subtract 2. And those are my two answers, y equals negative 1 third or y equals negative 2. So again, we're solving. Let's solve one more example, solving the equations. Now. Our book does not address this for quite some time, but let me mention a theorem called the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. With a name like that, it's, it's got to be pretty important. It says if you're solving an equation, the degree of x that you have is how many answers we're looking for. 
So if we have x squared, we're looking for two answers. If we do a quick review of our previous problem there, we had y squared, which means we're looking for two answers, and we found our two answers. In this particular case, we're going to look for two answers as well. It's already step one is done. Everything is on one side, zero is on the other side. There's two ways to solve this, but we're going to get the same answer either way. One is to forget our special formulas temporarily, and think of this as foil backwards, and it factors as x minus 3 times x minus 3. Zero product property says set each factor equal to zero, and solve so we get x equals 3 or x equals 3. And another way to write this is if your answer occurs twice, the book calls it a double root. We say x equals 3, and that's a double root. Other textbooks might say x equals 3 multiplicity 2, which means my answer occurs twice. The other way is to recognize that this is a perfect square trinomial formula. And with the perfect square trinomial formula, that's going to factor as x minus 3 quantity squared. We set that x minus 3 equal to 0. And we acknowledge that that 3 has to occur twice, because I'm looking for two answers. So that 3 is a double root. So one of the main goals of factoring was to be able to solve equations using factoring, and that's what we illustrated in today's lesson.